Hello and welcome to the final video in the WCOM Basics Differential Equations series. Uh, this video is going to go over uh, step functions, impulse functions, and uh, shifting theorems, which are nifty little ways uh, we can work with step and impulse functions when using Laplace transforms. Um, so a step function, simply put, is a function that remi remains at zero until a certain point, and then at that point it becomes a constant valued function. Uh, this is represented with uh, f of t equals k of k times u of t minus a, where at a the function becomes uh, f of t equals k. Uh, this can also be combined, so um, for example, you could have uh, multiple different steps in your function. And in this case, it's, uh, your function is going to be 0 up until a1, at which point it's going to become k, and then it's going to it's going to become k1, sorry, and then from k1, uh, uh, for, sorry, from a1 to a2, it's going to be k1, and then at a2, it's going to be, uh, it, the function is going to become k2, and um, one thing to note is that at the end of the step, so, so at the end of the step, you have a uh, an open interval and at the beginning of the next step it's closed. So that's what I mean by up until uh, a. Uh, so, uh, so, then, so then at a2, uh, f of t is going to be k1 plus k2 because this doesn't really go away. Uh, so let's say for example, um, Let's say, for example, we have k1 is equal to 3, k2 is equal to negative 7, a1 is equal to 2, and a1 is, and a2 is equal to 5. So I've just gone ahead and drawn what, what that looks like. It's 0, and then 3, and then negative 4. Uh, uh, yeah, nothing really too uh, too uh, funky going on there. Uh, we will get to how to use that in computations in a second. I just want to uh, go over the impulse function, which um, simply put again means that you're just you're at zero, and then at some time you have a instant of force where uh, with some amplitude. Uh, so, so this is how you would write that. At time a, you have an amplitude of k, and all else, um, and you have an amplitude of zero. Amplitude, I just mean, uh, by amplitude, I just mean distance from the uh, x-axis. So, uh, yeah, let's, let's get into what the Laplace transforms of these are, because it, uh, they do come up a lot in physics or um, Electro, uh, electrical engineering, if you have a switch and turns it onto a voltage at some point, or if you have, if you're like kicking a ball, it could be described with an impulse force. So I've just set up our Laplace transform in an integral form. So we have our function here. That's our function, is the step function. Um, but we, we can't just integrate this straight away, but we do know that this is 0 up until a, and then at a it's 1, just because I've set k equal to 1 for now. So here we have two parts. Uh, from 0 to a, it's 0, and then from uh, a to infinity, u of t minus a is uh, 1, so we just have e to minus st. So all we have to do is evaluate this. 
We're going to do so with an improper integral. Uh, I'm going to be a little sloppy with the notation, just forgive me. But So yeah, I just have b going to infinity. So when we plug in b, which is a, uh, nearing infinity, here we have um, we have what do we have? This becomes zero, and then we're gonna. Sorry, this should be a negative s. So this is gonna be zero plus since we're subtracting a negative uh, plus e to o. Yeah, we're plugging in a right because we're doing the second part of the integral. So so e to the uh, negative a s over s is going to be the Laplace transform of our step function. So I have that written here. I'm going to erase that in just a second. But if you have a printed out a printout sheet of all the Laplace transforms, that should be on there. So this one's a little bit more intuitive and straightforward. If we have an impulse here uh, at some time a at e to the at minus st, I'm sorry, we're of course respect with t, uh, respect to t. All the only value that really counts is e to the minus a times s. So that's the Laplace transform of the impulse function. So now we're going to get into the first and, first and second shifting theorem, which are nice ways to kind of utilize uh, e to the minus as and e to the minus as over s, which are the Laplace transforms. So when you invert them, that's when you would use the first and second, first and or second uh, shifting theorem. So I just wrote them plainly uh, here, and uh, basically it says that it gives you rules for transforming and, and thus inverse transforming, uh, things that have to do with the, um, the step function. And if you notice here, this is the Laplace transform of an of a impulse function with, uh, ampl with uh, k is equal to 1. And so, um, So it gives us kind of rules, uh, and this if L of f of t is equal to f of s is just your baseline because we're going to notice f of s or like f of t and kind of unravel. So the way we solve things is first you'll notice there's a shift. So the shift will be like f of s minus a or f of t minus a. You'll notice that there's a shift, and then um, and then unshift it, solve it as you would a normal Laplace transform, or transform it as you would a normal Laplace transform, and then shift it back using these rules. So I'm just going to do a couple examples on how to do what I just said. So we are um, transforming this step function, which is acting on uh, this whole this whole function here. Uh, and I mentioned before step functions usually with constants, but uh, they can you can also just have um, any kind of function there. It just means that the step function switches on or off this function basically. So at, at t equals 2, this function is switched on. Uh, and you'll notice that this t minus 2 means that that function starts at t minus 2, which is why we call it a shifting theorem. 
because you just kind of slide it to two units over without changing instead of just cutting off everything that's before two. So we notice that this is shifted by two. And we also notice that we're going to be using our, our uh, second shifting theorem because we have u of t minus a and then f of t minus a. So uh, this also tells us that, um, that f of t is equal to t cosine of 5t. And so L of f of t, uh, and this should be on, on whatever sheet you're, you choose to use, uh, just t times cosine of kt. So this is our uh, L of f of t, which I will call f of s, just so that you can see that here it here it equals f of s, and so that means that the Laplace transform of, of what we had originally is going to be e to the minus a s times f of s. And that's how you use the second shifting theorem. I'm just going to do a simple example of the first. So here we have, uh, we want to take the inverse Laplace transform of this algebraic expression, or mostly algebraic expression. So we notice this looks something like t squared. Um, however, uh, it looks, it, it seems to be that it shifted three units. So. Uh, So that means that f of s is just 2 over s cubed. Um, so then the inverse Laplace transform of that uh, is just going to be t squared, meaning that if we have um, e to the 3t uh, times t squared, then we're going to get, we end up with this, and uh, therefore this that L inverse of S is equal to uh, is equal to e to the three t times t squared, and so that's that's kind of when you'll use each of the shifting theorems. Uh, so let's get into uh, kind of when. Uh, the most prominent time you'll use shifting theorems, and that's uh, a kind of, it's more difficult than the first two we did. It's the same kind of in theory, though. So here we have, uh, we're taking the inverse Laplace transform of this big mess. And so this probably came from a, a delta function that you uh, took the Laplace transform of, and now we're getting back, uh, which, uh, which is why I, I taught these thing, two things together, because a lot of the times you'll use a step or impulse function and then have to use the shifting theorem to, to actually solve for your equation. So let's write this in a little uh, simpler way that's um, less messy. So right away, we, we see that we're using the second shifting theorem once we clean this up a little bit, uh, because we have e to the minus a s here, and then f of s is going to be equal to this. So um, now all we have to do is uh, find the corresponding f of t. And this looks like uh, sine of 2t, however, uh, because that would be 2 over s squared s plus 2. Yep, sorry, all these s's should have been squared. Uh, so that doesn't change anything in our algebraic manipulations. So um, 
if this were sine of 2t, we would have 2 over s squared plus 2 squared. Uh, so we just need to make this 2. Uh, so we're going to divide out 10, multiply by 10. So we have 10 divided by 10 times 10, which is still 10. And then multiply it by 2 and divide out by 2. So we have, uh, so now we have uh, 2 over s squared plus 4, which is just what we need. We just have this extra factor of 5. So now we have f of t. Um, we have our f of t in check. We have our a. Uh, we have our a, which is going to be equal to 5, because that's uh, telling us that's how much we're going to shift it by. And then looking back on shifting theorem number 2, uh, then the corresponding um, function that you get when you inverse Laplace transform this is going to be uh, 5 sine of tt minus 5, and of course shifted by 5. So, um, I know I didn't solve any initial value problems with uh, impulse or step functions, but um, honestly, the best way to do that is just practice and keep in mind of your f of s's and f of t's, and it's exactly the same as the method we outlined last um, we we outlined last video, of course. Um, this book goes really in depth uh, into step and impulse functions. Uh, what I I did not really do that because um, if you know how to uh, transform and inverse transform everything, it should be fairly easy for you to figure out how to solve initial value problems. I do urge you to look up some practice problems because it does take some getting used to. Uh, getting your f of s's or your f of s minus a's and get, like kind of formulating the uh, algorithm in your head for solving these. So uh, yeah, with that, you're all set to solve pretty much any basic differential equation. Uh, uh, that's the end of this series. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, check out our website and uh, check out our differential equations book, which uh, goes in depth into more s subjects and has a lot of um, exercises that you can do. Uh, check out the, uh, the rest of the playlist if you want to go back and reference anything. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel or check out our website with the links here, below, here to my side. Of course, if you're on a mobile device, you can find cards for all this in the corner. Uh, thank you for watching and have a good day.